Okay. And Dan's leaving. Um, all right. Well, anyway, good evening and welcome to the February 13th, 2023 meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee 2. Um, I'll do a quick review of the agenda. We will have an opportunity for public comment followed by new business. Um, we actually don't have any meeting minutes to approve tonight, so we'll skip right over that. Go right to approving of invoices. Um, we will review some updated information that will be provided by Vertex and Perkins Eastman around cost, around um, wetlands, and around design options, which will drive right into our evaluation criteria and matrix, um, leading us up to the, I guess, the main event tonight, which is the deliberation and discussion on the preferred site option. And we are um, planning to close tonight with a vote on the preferred site option for the preliminary schematic report. Um, so with that, I will move on to public comment. Um, I know we have some audience members from the school committee. Any public comments or just, okay. Thank you. Well, certainly if you have anything uh, as we go on, we'll be happily open it up. Um, so we'll then move John, to Yeah. For the sake of the minutes, is this a jointly listed meeting? It is, right? Well, it's, it's not a... It's not listed as a joint, but the school committee is hosted as a meeting here. I think it's not a joint meeting, right? Yeah, it's not a joint, but it's, yes, but they're posted as being here. Um, okay, so we've got some bills to pay. Uh, we have one um, invoice package that was sent out last week. It includes three invoices. Um, invoice number CPM-116-10, payable to Compass Project Management in the amount of $10,350.25. Invoice number 95420-000-5 to Perkins Eastman in the amount of $32,760. Uh, An invoice number that I think is the same, but um, 95420-000-5 to Perkins Eastman, that is $10,375 so for a grand total of $53,485.25. And I think, Mrs. Rothermick, if you could correct me or help me out here, the reason why those Perkins Eastman numbers are separated is that because they're for two part different it, part, part of it's the district wide the, study. That's what right. I thought. Okay, so it's all in one invoice, Correct. but we split it out in terms of where the money's coming from the two different appropriations. Mm -hmm. So we're looking to approve invoices tonight for Compass Project Management and Perkins Eastman. Total amount $53,485.25. Are there any questions about these? Or do you want to talk about them? No, I was just going to say uh, we're, the, the transition has occurred with the name to Vertex. So. Just the official record, the invoices will be going to Vertex. It says Compass on me. I appreciate um, Compass. I, but, I so, okay. Compass, but. We'll make sure you get the money. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> any, any other questions? Okay. If there are none, then I would seek a motion to approve the invoice. I move we approve the invoices in the amount of $53,485 in some odd sense. 25 cents. Okay, okay, so we have a motion by Mike, second by Shahadul, and we are all in person tonight, so we do not have to roll call vote. Um, so all in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, then it is unanimous and <coughs> is approved, and I'll sign that and get that over tonight. That's eight, right, John? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I think we have seven voting members. No. Eight would be problematic. Um, okay, so next we will move on to updated cost information. Jeff, you're going to drive on this one? Yep, so in your packet is the same table you saw uh, last week. We, we firmed up a few numbers. Um, the first and foremost is the, uh, the swing space number uh, around the middle of the, the chart here. So we had previously kind of put in a plug of $20,000, $20 million for the full modular village. Um, we had recently received bids for a full modular village of a slightly smaller modular, which is a double-decker modular village in the town of Watertown um, that had very similar characteristics to what we're looking at, and that was $27 million that was awarded this, uh, this past fall. Um, so we carried that, essentially the straight number with not a, not a lot of escalation, but put that in at $28 million because it is a direct comparable um, to the modular village that you may or may not need. And this, of course, did not include any acquisition should you need to procure a location for this. 
We'd also talked at length about the um, Elmwood Bar option and the fact that that front half of the site was needed for multiple things such as parking, the geothermal wells, uh, the recess space for the kids, and so we earmarked off-site parking value and some shuttle expenses and that's kind of what starts to be that six million dollar number. Essentially we took five percent of the overall construction dollars to think about uh, phasing premiums as well. Uh, we would certainly have to work the drop off and pick up around the back of the building so there would be work associated with maintaining the existing building while building a new building in front of it and the construction cost originally just picked up the new building and not some of those phasing premiums so at this point we're carrying a 6.6 .6 million dollar swing space uh, value at the Elmwood site for the bar option. The other thing that we looked at is uh, we carried a flat uh, soft cost multiplier of 30 percent at the last meeting. I've dialed that down uh, currently to 28.8. It's still on the conservative side uh, based on where we are now but I think that's prudent at this juncture on the stage. We're going to drill down on this uh, when we get to the August approval budget that you guys want to move forward with. I did a detailed budget that led up to this 28.8 percent um, it includes a 6% construction contingency and a 3% project contingency. Normally on a construction you would carry 5% and, and, uh, for total construction contingency and a project contingency with the exception of pre-COVID would have been carried at like 1%. But in the past couple of years obviously there's been a need to have more money within your appropriation. So currently we're adding an extra 3% in that overall number and we'll revisit that with you guys as to what's the safe number to take the town meeting in the fall. So. Uh, we did dial that down, so uh, it did drop a few points. The other item just above swing space is uh, potential deducts. Um, so there's a couple of things in that line item. One is the fact that we're carrying full geothermal at all the options as the baseline. Um, to go to a hybrid geothermal option, there's a potential to save uh, $1.7 million. And we'll dial that in with the design engineers as we get closer to the, the final schematic. And so those options are available at the Elmwood site. The other option that's available to the town uh, and the committee is to go with a design bid build. So it's a general contractor delivery method. So you're getting the lump sum low price number um, and you know more aggressive bidding on bid day. Um, so that number is lower, uh, potentially a five to six million dollar savings at the beginning of the job. And I say at the beginning because if you go design bid build, you'll carry more money in contingency. Where if you go with a CM risk, I would carry less money in contingency, and that money ends up in the GMP and can be turned back over to the town, you know, should it not be needed. So we've talked a little bit about the differences of those two, and you can hold on your ultimate decision uh, to later in the process, uh, again, leading to the August approval. But the, uh, the general bid uh, approach we would not recommend at Elmwood because it's such a tight site at that location, trying to use an occupied building and build a new building right in front of it, or the swing space needed would necessitate, I think, a CM at risk approach, where the uh, Hayden Row, you have the option. And there are pluses and minuses to, to both approaches at that location. So a lot of that long-winded <laughs> st statement is that there are two green bars at the bottom of the slide here. One kind of shows the total project budget after potential deducts, and one is the, the top end of the range there is we, where we are with the, the CM at risk. So the CM at risk, you see that the Elmwood uh, Village option, which has the highest swing space, you know, tops out just over 201 million. And that the other options that remain are all uh, plus or minus of each other in the range of 171 million to 176, depending on which option. So they're, they're in the range of each other, all remaining options. When you look at the potential to go with a, a design bid build contractor, you'll see a, a bigger difference between the remaining Elmwood Bar and then the options at Hayden Row for those, uh, uh, all four options uh, presented at Hayden Row. So I know a lot of this was similar we saw last week, but there are some nuances. So I open that up to any questions before we you know, proceed to the next segment. So before we open it up for questions, Jeff, I wanted to just uh, so put it in the context of tonight. Um, so we, a few of us actually had a discussion about how best to present this with the deduct information. Um, what I think it, it's, it's really good to see this so that we can establish the range. Um, it's important to remember that when it comes to things like CM at risk or the full geothermal versus the hybrid option, these are not decisions that we need to or probably should make tonight because we're gonna continue to get more information as this comes. <coughs> So as we think about debating, you know, d debating our site options, these ranges are really helpful to have, but I just want to make sure from a committee standpoint, I don't think it logically makes sense for us to sort of add in the CM at risk versus design bid build debate tonight. 
um, just you know putting that out there ahead of the discussion. So with that, I'd just ask if there are any questions about the revised cost of Great. Uh, then we'll proceed to Dan. Um, we have, I have this and I have that one too. No, I can use that one. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so last time we met, uh, we, I kind of unveiled the wetlands or how we were doing with the wetlands. That delineation is now complete. It was mostly complete last time. There were a few areas that the um, wetland scientists felt were marginal. Um, one of them continues to be marginal, uh, but the now the F now you see one labeled F1, F6. That one they're saying is highly probable that it is a small wetland there. So that's a new piece of new information. Um, it's pretty small. It doesn't really impact the overall design of the site, but they're creeping in on us from all sides now. <laughs> So uh, at your last meeting, uh, and on this image in front of you, all the orange uh, donations or designations are what got added as part of this flagging. We'd show the area close to the marathon and these ones up front. So this one, D1 one, one to 111, and then F1 to F6 weren't as well defined last go around. And this small dis depression at the back of the site was not flagged on that, uh, that one. So we also wanted to show you what that looks like in the context of one of the options. Um, so this option here shows you know, both the west and the east side of the site. Uh, this dashed white line is the uh, property boundary as it goes around these contiguous sites. Uh, harder to read in these layers are the white zone would be the actual wetlands proper. The blue zone <coughs> is the 25 foot or 50 foot? 50, 50, 50 foot. Do not disturb zone. And then the orange is the 100 foot. There's a lot more you can do in the 50 to 100 foot zone. It gets more restrictive uh, from 50 in to the to ground zero of the, uh, the wetlands. As we talked about, a culvert would be necessary uh, as the road crosses over here to, to hydraulically connect the wetlands should a road be put in at that location. But there's an ability to, to shift the project within the site around all these wetlands and still meet the program needs. And so, you know, the, the summary is that both east and west are still in play and still viable uh, and we'll have to work around the, the wetlands that have been flagged that's that's what we, that was the um what we were trying to show here is we want to look at how these actually would affect the site and whether or not we were going to get too crunched in by these I, I don't think that's the case um, we've been able to work our way around the ones on the on the western side and the um, now the one that's was a, was a marginal when this was drawn and actually is it a real one i don't think that's going to really that just means that road is going to be pushed over into the 50 hundred area because the 50 hundred allows the roads the 50 less is nothing the other thing here that um to note is that we took the the three wing scheme from belmwood and brought it over onto this site just to kind of show you what that might look like and we kind of tweaked it we took the uh, we separated the gym and the calf and put them on either side as anchoring that main space because that was one of the comments that we were hearing was that there might be too many students in that area coming out and that that wasn't really might not be a preferable setup so we figured let's look at while we're looking at this let's take a look at whether or not we can do that as well and how that plan might look so this is a new option called hr7w which is that option which is basically a three-wing version with that tweak so from uh, you know the cost and schedule and comparative, it checks all the same boxes as the other three-winged option at the Hayden Row site. Uh, so we have all the same data that's applicable to this particular option. We wanted to show, or the design team wanted to show how that might lay out. Uh, and this is how it lands on the site in this particular image. It shows those wetlands in a kind of zoomed in view. Important things to note is that you know one of your decisions tonight is about the, the overall site the location within a site and, and potentially the building footprint that you want to move forward in. The building itself is the important part, right? The, the other things you see on the screen here are fungible, right? The shape of the parking lot, the shape of the athletic fields, they don't need to be perfect rectangles as they're shown here. They could be kidney shaped, they could be L shaped, they could be all kinds of things. So the design team will work around all the pieces they need to make the building work on the particular site. These sites at Hayden Row are still in action with the wetlands that are de defined, and there's still plenty of real estate to work the pieces that go around the main course, which is the building itself. So what that looks like on a floor plan. The floor plans. So that there's that gym that anchors the, um, the southern part of the building now, 
rather than being pushed up against the calf and stage. Those are completely separated now. And then the three wing layout, which is a, <coughs> tried to spread the wings out a little bit more on this too, in order to make those courtyards a little more. So it's a three story building. It's going to be those courtyards want to be a little bit larger so that there's not so much shadow getting into those courtyards and they're a little bit more usable more time during the year. That was one of Dawn's biggest um, fears about the two wing versus the three wing is that she really felt strongly that the two wing had a bigger courtyard, maybe a potentially more usable, more sunlight, more space, and that the three wing kind of makes those smaller. So that was one of the, this was one of the effort to see if we could increase those courtyard sizes too a little bit. The other thing nice about the three wing is that a lot, the, from a expansion, there's three wings to expand onto rather than the two, so. So, so does this have the same, when you, look, when you shared with us the educational plan considerations with the three shorter wings, which used to be, well, is still at Elmwood, it was uh, the availability to add six to seven classrooms, 130 students, so that it would be the exact same numbers for that then. Yeah, so essentially yeah. when we looked at the, uh, the chart here, the <coughs> chart in front of you on the screen is what the committees looked at the last two weeks and all we did was add a new column and we carried over the rating for the uh, Pinwheel West HR4W um, because it has the same adjacencies within the building and everything else on the site is identical to that location. So we extrapolated out um, the same scoring and, and feel confident that that's acceptable. You know, this building would allow, 18, I think, 18 classrooms to be added. And again, you know, the, the information, although new, is a response to the, the comments about the Elmwood uh, option that had those three wings, and they just uh, disengaged the gym and calf to opposite sides of the floor plan. That's the, the main change there. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions on the new information before we uh, transition over? And so, you know, as part of the packet tonight, we have, you know, the side-by-sides and the options. We have the floor plan side-by-side. -side. We have all the individual sites, so we can go to any depth of, uh, of reference to the conversations you guys want to have about the options, the sites, or the layouts within the sites. So I'll turn it back to John. Okay. Um, so if there are no more specific questions on the, the new information that was just provided, um, I think what we're moving on to is the discussion around choosing a preferred site option. Um, as we discussed at the last meeting, um, and I think there was general agreement on, it probably makes sense to take this step by step. And so first and foremost, looking at, we have two different sites that, two, two different sites that we're looking at between the Elmwood site and the Hayden Row site. Um, so I think as we as we think about narrowing the options, it probably makes sense to first discuss the two sites, then look at, depending on which one we choose, if there is a particular decision around site location, and then following that, what the, the, the final schematic the final schematic design that we're choosing would be. Um, we really only need to take one vote. Um, but I thought that, that was a good way to kind of move through it. I don't think we need to, unless there's a compelling reason to, I don't think we'll be looking to vote each section of this. I think it's better to do it as one. <coughs> Mike? Uh, I, uh, the, the way we selected the owner's project matter and the architectural team, those of you in that selection process, the state require, MSBA requires to assign numbers to each other at the end, whoever had the highest or lowest, I forget was the winner. So taking our matrix, I essentially did the same thing. And I used the same numbers. Dark green was five, light green was four, uh, three was yellow, two was orange, one was red. And I added up the numbers. And all of the Elmwood, the highest Elmwood site number was 46. The rest of them on Hayden Road Street were 71, 73, 70, 72, and 73. So, <clears throat> and I've always been a big fan of the Elmwood site, don't get me wrong. But given the, the issues surrounding buildability, uh, the, the proximity of the gas main and potential costs in terms of blasting and delays, um, even though one of the citizens said it, maybe a guy will turn out to be a carpenter because he went to school while it was going on, 
Mm. As a grandparent, I don't think that's, I'm a carpenter, I don't think that's a good thing necessarily. <laughs> so I, I, I don't like that idea. Um, given the site constraints, it's so small that it was difficult to get the, the, the equipment on the site, the builders on the site, the excavators on the site, the teachers on the site, and the kids on the site, all at the same time. So <clears throat> I, would, I would move, um, and again, I'm the Elmwood fan, I would move to take all the Elmwood options off the table at this point and help focus the decision on the uh, Hayden Rose sites. Before we get there, I want to give everybody that Whatever. opportunity have to, a, have a good to one. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't see these. Um, I appreciated that you added everything up, and I, that's that as how we did that at the design procurement. Um, but I, there are pieces on here that I would say have a heavier weight, in my um, opinion, of of the site we should choose. But I, my opinion aligns with yours, Mike. I think. Unfortunately, um, there's just some big pieces that happen at that Elmwood site that make it very challenging to think about students going to school during construction. I think the disruption to the students who would be at Elmwood at the time of construction is, that's very impactful. And I think about the conversation we had about parking and potentially thinking about shifting staff from like a pickup spot and putting them to and from on a bus, thinking about dismissal. We're talking about everyday circumstances that make a building run effectively that would impact the amount of instruction that students could get within the school day. And that to me is just, that's huge. Um, and just something I can't seem to get past. Um, and I also feel like we are better able to meet the programming needs at the Hayden Row sites um, in a way that's advantageous for the future. So I agree that the Elmwood site is, is not a match. Yeah, the only thing I'll add, I think last week the, the elephant in the room came up and that's the traffic issue at probably the preferred place and I'm not suggesting that what the gentleman shared means it's going to be great, but it may not be as onerous as some people think. And um, I, I think it's encouraging to, to hope we can come up with some avenues to pursue and address probably the only, the, the major concern people have with Hayden Road. I, I agree with everything that's been said, especially the traffic. Um, with the discussion that occurred last week uh, with our traffic engineer, the traffic is just comparable to the Elmwood side, it's not worse. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, for me, tilts the scale in favor of the, the Hayden Road side. Shop to that. You don't have to. I, just, I would echo what everyone else said, so I figured <laughs> it was unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, I, I have the similar thoughts that traffic seemed to be the main issue that uh, was being discussed, and I followed some of the comments from the traffic expert, traffic engineer, and it seems like it uh, it is palatable. It's probably you know we wish it could be better, but it is manageable. Seems like so. <coughs> I would also agree with that comments that's made. And then just um, any of the, the district staff, anything you want to add to that, the two sites or? I agree with Tiffany, just in thinking about the operations of a building. Um, as much as I love the site that Elmwood is currently at, and I think that there are lots of staff who really appreciate being a little bit further, you know, right off of 495, a little bit separated from downtown I, I think that it's a beloved spot um, so I know that there were lots of folks who might have liked that but just trying to build a new building while you maintain excellence um, I, I think that feels prohibitive in, in every way that I try to imagine it you know dismissal lunch nurses you know just the typical day-to-day -day functioning of a school I think that that would place a lot of stress on a staff and, and community who is just starting to recover from the stress of the pandemic. And I'm not sure it, it would be a good idea to kind of reintroduce that kind of stress. So. 
And I think just operationally, like we've spoken in other meetings, I think, you know, going forward after construction and the buildings open, I think operationally it makes a lot of sense for the district, um, at least as far as what I do is concerned maintenance wise and snow removal and, and um, landscape, you know, all the, all the stuff that kind of we look at going forward. I think it just, um, it makes a lot of sense not to travel across town for some of those things. And the other elementary principals and I have talked a lot about the opportunities that proximity would provide in terms of professional development and collaborating. I think that that would be an exciting opportunity for staff. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the only thing I, I would sort of echo everything that was said and, and it's, it feels like there are questions to answer about the Hayden Road site in terms of traffic and other things like that, but all the things we talk about about challenges on Elmwood yeah. are definitives, yeah. right? We're, there's no question to answer about those. So um, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of in support. So it seems like our consensus is we're moving our discussion onto the Hayden Row um, sites. And so if there's no objection to that, with the Hayden Row sites, the next thing to look at is probably do we have strong, is there a strong preference amongst the committee or the, the district staff about the east versus west location? Or is there, I mean, I will also offer if, if we want to leapfrog it, if somebody just has a design option they think is their, their favorite, feel free. In, the, in the, the west option, which would be the one that's closest to Hayden Road Street, and we're talking about a three building structure with potentially three prongs coming up it right up against little single family homes along Hayden Road Street. Mm -hmm. And also that's where a lot of the wetland is. Yep. Um, I like the eastern portion better because it moves us away from there. Um, it's um, in terms of visibility for the school you you can see it readily because a lot of fresh farms is here and the school is at the back of it. Um, which may not be a bad thing, it may be a good thing. Um, but given the height, uh, having it further away from the residences, I think is a better thing, particularly for the residents. Also, by moving it, from what I can see, to the east location, that is further away from Hayden Road, it gives a longer traffic route, or potential traffic route, to queue up buses, and those parents that gotta bring their kids to school. And it gives them more space to be and not on Hayden Road Street, which is what we're trying to do. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the location of the fields, from my perspective, it really doesn't matter. Um, there's plenty of land to put fields. Um, by keeping it to the east, that is further away, potentially it frees up more space between this school and Marathon for expansion further. Um, that was, you know, if all it was east to west, I, I would just say, for those reasons, I would prefer it farther away from Hayden Row, up more east. But I have to my two cents. I have to agree with that. Um, in terms of west, it's more compact. But, for instance, we've been talking about separating the preschool at some point. By having it east, you have a piece of land in between Marathon and the new Elmwood site that allows you to possibly have like a little preschool or something close to Marathon, you know, still within a place where co once again collaboration can happen. Um, instead of placing us in a position where we might have to put a preschool way in the back, right, kind of hidden away behind the two buildings. Um, I just think that that would be a little more organic if we had that space available. We'd have more choices. We'd have the choice in front and the choice behind. Um, so for that's an extra added reason. I agree with him about the traffic queue. I think it, it absolutely allows for a lot more cars to be inside of our space instead of out on the road. Um, but those are my two primary reasons. It, could you confirm how much space is there between Marathon and East? Would it be a, literally taking the, the whole building and setting it there? Could you literally put another whole new Elmwood school in between the two? Is it that much room? No, that's it. Yeah, it's a yeah, yeah, space. You can see the scale of the marathon as it exists today. Um, 
this is the proposed in the east option. Uh, you know, some of these fields and parking, as I said, will, will shift, you know, to work around the, the buffer zone. But there's certainly this whole space here is, is duplicated here, so you can two schools could share. You can the fit, yeah, yeah, two yeah, schools. You put another school. So either to her point, I hate to bring up another school, but but right, <laughs> 20 years from now, let's push it out that far. But, but not not only a school, but enough room for fields and things like that too, not just a building, obviously. So yeah, the western part of the site, we've always left the back of it and Why undeveloped it. question about the east site just because I can't remember um, this is up against like the wild road wild rose yes. road. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. would that provide I mean it, it's hard because there's kind of like a den in and a cul-de-sac right there really um, but would it be possible for families from like the blueberry neighborhood to to connect by foot that way would that actually be an opportunity in the long run so there's there's definitely street frontage over here at this mike you can refresh my memory yeah, of the it, name there's, of the street. A, there's a little cul-de-sac only has one house on it right that one that services the briarcliff subdivision the wild road houses were only been there 10 years so that little cul-de-sac is yes. new yeah. uh, but um as i as you may recall when we talked about that piece the town does own that piece but the piece is under the control of the um, Conservation Commission, uh, ostensibly, and it was it was yeah. earmarked. Uh, these guys got the deed, but it was earmarked for recreational use. But you'd have to go through conservation to get that. But as somebody at the school department mentioned a couple of weeks ago, it may not be a bad way to connect the Briarcliff subdivision, which is pretty big. It's 40 years old, but it's really big, to the back of the school without going on the street, mm -hmm. uh, potentially. Um, so I, I previously worked at a school that was um, as it was very large, it was seven hundred more than seven hundred students. This this very similar age band, grades one through four, um, and we were able to connect in the back uh, a walking road. And actually, we had seventy students who would walk, mm -hmm. and it improved our traffic. Mm -hmm. It, um, sure. immensely yeah. so I do see that there's like this little gem of like how to support traffic if we go with the eastern plan um, because there is this opportunity to walk yeah. um, so I you know I agree with what people have said already I think the east provides um, more options for us to support the traffic which we've heard is the biggest um, yeah. need so that's just something I I just wanted to check in yeah the other side has uh Paper streets, so you know this is a yeah. potential potential layout of a potential development. And uh, that yeah, it, it uh, unlikely you're going to get a road to connect from there to the school walkway. That's what perhaps. it was. It was a yeah. it was a large walkway, yeah. and actually yeah. it could it was it could also be accessed no for emergency of, vehicles. Yeah. But it was like there was a one. Yeah, there's no way off of Wild Road. The houses just are around the perimeter of that circle, um, and the other one that has one house. You know, he, he he would certainly have problems with cows driving through his front yard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, right. in terms of walkway, that s seems to be perhaps a win-win for everybody, particularly the Briarcliff neighborhood, which is yeah. pretty big. Mm -hmm. And what an experience for a large group of kids to be able to walk to school like that. It's, that's like a social thing. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> which is Briarcliff over there? So it's off the this map. This was the other Blueberry Lane. I mean, these are again paper streets. Yeah. Like theoretically, the paper street could connect to, to either portion of the site. But again, that all depends on the developer and how they subdivide this this parcel. So Briarcliff was down here. So that what I just showed you. Oops. What I was just showing you was up in this zone here. Uh, Briarcliff is down here. <coughs> and this is where there's frontage where you see the little curve. That's that cul-de-sac. So uh, a walking path could be connected <coughs> through oh, the site. Okay. <coughs> Other thoughts, east versus west? Certainly, Carol, Susan, Tim, Ann, as well. In, in light of what we just found out about the wetlands, um, this additional wetlands area, does that create an issue with an east building? No, I, I mean, that one can still be worked around. This means the road's going to, there's going to be a lot of curvy roads on the Perimeter to work their way around these so. these wetlands, but we're still going to inter we're going to still interact with those southern wetlands. There's the most of them. We're going to have to go around them 
even on that side of the site because that's where the main road to get out is going to be. Yeah. He's, he's referring to these ones here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a cost differential between east and west, right? There is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so the, uh, the east, east being deeper on the site would have a longer roadway, more asphalt paving, uh, more sidewalks, more longer utility runs, uh, additional tree clearing to get deeper onto the site, and then ultimately, you know, more maintenance for you know snow removal and future you know paving, patching, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But once you get to the location, the rest of the accoutrements are the, the same. Do you know what's the differential? At this conceptual level, what we were saying was about a million and a half potentially, but we would dial that in uh, and, and understand it greater. But looking at the linear footage of the longer uh, driveway, because keep in mind, and when it's up front here, um, this roadway and the west option is serving to serve the school. But if it's in the east option, this road is actually just to get to the site, and this road is to get to the site. But when it's up front, it's serving both the queue length and the road surrounding the school. So you end up with, you know, twice the length of uh, feeder roads uh, to the location. And that's the driver and the cost. Thank you. <coughs> they just so become service roads, yeah. There. Could we, while we're talking about this, could we talk about the two wing versus three mm -hmm. wing options and perhaps eliminate one or the other? Well, can we do the, can, the, the village, the three wing village that you showed for west is not available on east, right? Or could? No, it can, can be. We just didn't want to draw it out. Okay, it is. Yeah. Okay, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Good, okay. Yeah. I, I'd only be interested from a perspective of the educational perspective and the longer of walking for the length of the. <laughs> The, the wings um, and also the two as I understand it only gives us uh, more minimal options as far as expansion there's only two wings to add to instead of three um, I, I, you know I, I'd like to know how the educators feel about that would be more important to me is two versus three or whether it makes any difference at all I, I don't know yeah. I but I'll vote for whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do prefer the three. three. I feel like if we're making, if we've been thinking about creating a smaller school within a school, yeah. and we've discussed the idea of a three-story building where you have second grade, third grade, fourth grade, yeah. and then second moves to third and third moves to fourth, you really are creating Easy. something yeah, really lovely where kids get used to the same people in that same part. You, know, you could have the same assistant principal working with those children for three years. And that's really been a goal of ours is to get to know families over a longer period of time as opposed to transitioning every two years. Yeah. So yeah. I think that it, it creates a smaller community. It's nice. Does it have any advantages or disadvantages over the pinwheel? Because that's a three classroom wing design as well. Could we show on um, the uh, slide that has the educational plan considerations that has the green and the black? Under yeah, thank you. Does that help? Just comparing the two. It's almost like we need to zoom in. The bar isn't jumping anymore. So the, the the two wing version, as we talked about, is a longer wing as a starting point, and then in future additions, it would be even a longer walk, which is what gave. Mm -hmm. The, the three wing approach, you know, an edge to the, the distribution of students and, and the funneling of students as they go to the CAF or gym or other large assembly spaces. The village EE6 doesn't show the fixes to the gym CAF, which would make it all green right at that point. Yeah. Yep. That was but why we did it. <laughs> and it creates more, that, so one of the advantages is it mm. potentially creates more of those courtyard spaces because you're lining up the three. Wings it gives you more there. ability to have closed and enclosed courtyard yeah. space and the it also is uh, cleaner from a kind of a public private sense I mean when you have the classroom mm -hmm. wing sticking yeah. out the front yeah. you have this this private space that's in the front now when they're all in the back there's a much cleaner lock off between the public and the private zones. That's yeah that's what I've always liked about the village like I was saying before it's like your house right 
you have the you walk in you see only the public stuff. yeah it's not as clean you behind you is another classroom right. <laughs> but with that one it also means that the cafeteria and the gymnasium need to be adjacent no, they're, they could be no, shifted. So no, 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 last no, week no, um, no. it showed it together based yeah. on the feedback. That's why Dan drew to a revised version of this where they detached the gym and put it on the other side. So that's what this option represents. Oh, I see. Thank you. Represents. So yeah. the right side here is the village number seven, yeah. which shows those separate with the three wings on one side. So front of house, back of house. Mm -hmm. And then the 4H or HR4, you know, had one wing on one side and then two on the other. Um, the number of courtyards is a personal preference or not you know some people like courtyards some people don't at all so you know I wouldn't let that be a driver on the I know on the green bar here it kind of colored the, the courtyards a little different I think that's a neutral from my standpoint but the consolidating the public spaces from the educational spaces it does have value and merit um, so in HR 7w can be flipped to face the other way that's correct mm -hmm. yeah. is, is there it sounds like there's not any hindrances with the new wetlands issue either way or is one a little bit better than the other or not one portion you mean one side of the site yes facing one way or the other as far as future expansion if you were to add on to those three wings down the road well the eastern side of the site is appears to be wetland almost wetland free okay the western part is where we're finding where we found yeah. Yeah. there's a little depression but that's an unknown that's it's pretty small and it's it's not she does not have it flagged yeah, we knew the front of portion of you was the heavier wet and then a mm -hmm. couple of pockets along the way. But the, uh, the, in terms of where the additions go, right, they can play with, once you choose the geometry, I, I can just slide forward or slide back, you know, to give more buffer or not. And then we work the pieces around the, uh, the main element of the building, too. Getting back to the two versus three wing discussion, is how mechanically will the educational staff separate two, three, and four with only two wings? You stick the fourth grade staff at the end? Oh. <laughs> no, it's easy with the three. You can do it by floor. You can do it by floor. You can do floor, floor, floor. Second floor, floor third floor. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, one of the things about nice about the three wing, though, is you can then do it by wing or floor if you yeah. so choose mm -hmm. later on to make a change. Right. Yeah. But you can't, that would be bring up the, the they're all the way down well, there. Uh, educationally, what would be the preference? Uh, two or three? If, if all else, everything else being equal. Oh, for me, it's three. Three. Three? I, I like this three. three. I do too. Yeah. Just my building, I wanted three. <laughs> and do you feel strongly about separating as they did in 7W, the gym and the cafeteria? What, what are your thoughts? I do, and I know Ian, you do as well. Yeah. Yes. Otherwise, if you are looking at Village Six, whoever is in that far away wing is going to walk a very long distance all the time to the cafeteria and the gym. Yeah. It's a really lot of walking for those kids. One of my regrets about Marathon, I don't have many of them, but the cafeteria and the gymnasium are side by side, separated by the airport hallway, mm -hmm. which when my grandkids go to play basketball on Saturdays and Sundays is a rat cess of people. Whereas if you had the cafeteria separated, it would, it would give more maneuverability and, and less impact, I suspect, on the school. Yeah, I would even say for community use, it yeah. gives opportunity to be able to let somebody use the gym and another group mm -hmm. use the cafeteria rather than having them right on top of one another. So we really avoid that at the marathon school. Exactly. Now. Yeah. And you, even during the school operation, when you talk about the one would have to travel a distance, but then the one that's closest to it, that's got to be a really loud space mm -hmm. for most <laughs> of the day that you're that you're teaching next to between the gym and the cafeteria both being there. So mm -hmm. I think that separated makes sense. Yeah, in, at the Marathon School, the gym and the cafeteria are close proximity, mm -hmm. and Lauren DeBow will comment on the traffic. Mm -hmm. it, it is an issue, so she's living that mm -hmm. and would not recommend doing it again. So, And we have lots of traffic situations at Elmwood. Our, the, our <coughs> gym and cafeteria are far apart, but all of the related art specials are in the same proximity. So as people are making changes from one thing to another, hmm. the log jam is, is pretty serious. Mm -hmm. I'd love not to have that. Just a quick question. Yeah. I think I heard it, but I just want to make sure the 
HR 7W is also available as HR 7E. Yeah. yeah. So there is an East version. Yeah. And I think Bill mentioned it, so it should be flipped over. Right. Yeah. 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 So if you, if you picture it literally flipping at 180, you'll see the gym is, would be at the top and the cap at the bottom, like the village in the middle. And the splay is a little wider. Right? You have the three wings are a little, yeah, that you fan it out a little wider, but they can certainly play with the size of the courtyard and, and, and make sure it fits on the site. I mean, one of the things we experience as school committee <laughs> in the high school is the media center is right next to the gym, right? And so sometimes if there's a game and you're in that, in that media center, you hear everything. So I really like the fact that the, the media center is kind of tucked away in its own little corner away from both of the loudest spaces, right? So even though it's in the front, it's not tied to either space where there might be a ton of noise happening all the time. I did have a question related to what um, Leah brought up though, because there are a couple of classrooms that are quite close to the gym. Um, and there is, when I was working at this school, there was a classroom at, as close to this to the gym. And so they just needed to have their door closed all the time because um, like the basketballs and whatnot, I mean, it really was quite distracting. I'm curious if like, I, I noticed the music room is next to the cafeteria, which is, an, is a nice fit. Is there a way to put another maybe allied arts there? Um, whether it's the art room or I just, just a couple of those classrooms on the, the beginning of that academic wing might just be a challenge. I know that that's like nitty gritty, but. And I don't see the art room or room I don't see on there. It's on the it's third, so like floor, third floor, floor here. So oh, I see. Yeah. I, yeah. Which I assume you put for daylight purposes or yeah. things like that. And generally, art gets mm -hmm. you know, put on an upper level up to get more natural light. But these pieces are interchangeable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie will be psyched. <laughs> that's just one option, you know. But yeah. the uh, you know there, there's always going to be like teeny <laughs> tiny. Um, no, there will I be. Defer my preference for this village HR seven E. I mean, the gym is not going to be in an island as into itself. So you're always going to have some level of, of acousticians you have to deal with. I mean, we can yep. dial things up in terms of acoustical separation and you know at those zones on the one wall that is the party wall to classrooms. This particular <laughs> option had the buffer of the stairwell yep. in between it, so you get yeah. that yeah. deadening of space there. So there yeah. was some effort. We do need to work with the design team after we move forward with an option to tighten up some of this white space. You see, there's there's still a fair amount of white space. There's also you know the thermal efficiency of the building that will dial in we may you know push the gym a little bit closer to the program so i just want to mm -hmm. put that out there too that having it fully extended has other cost ramifications if we do pull it in a little closer to some of the other programs we'll have to deal with the acoustics but we could save dollars on the thermal efficiency of the building and other other aspects of it so things to keep in mind as we uh, as the design team fine tunes it beyond this yeah, and I think we can, even in design, keep talking about, you know, I guess the question would be, what's which is louder, the cafeteria or the gym, you know? I, for me, it's the cafeteria, I think, because that's when the kids, uh, it's less structured, right? I know you have uh, uh, teachers in there, but the kids are all talking. In the gym, it's a class, so they're, it may be a little bit louder, but it's not. It's also less student, a lot less students. A lot less class, students, yeah. It depends yeah, right. if they're cardio drumming or what they're actually yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in the cafeteria too, I mean, if you set it correctly with the right acoustics, which a lot of cafeterias for schools aren't set up correctly with the right acoustics, mm -hmm. but, but having worked at those, I can tell you, you can like sit in a room and if it has the right acoustics in it, mm -hmm. it doesn't right. matter that there's a million conversations, it'll break up the sound. Yeah. You shouldn't have any issues. Um, and that should be true of both spaces, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the gym, the issue is usually more the reverberation yeah. of the things hitting the floor. Um, so, you, so you get more vibration type issues too, right? Shuttle, yes. Yeah, quick question. Um, I see the three wings have a lot of educational and logistics advantages, it seems, uh, which is great. Uh, is there any significant cost differential between the two wings and the three wings? So the, the no. three wings has one extra end wall, mm -hmm. so you get uh, an extra elevation of a facade, um, but not a huge driver. Like the, the two-story versus three-story has a much bigger cost impact because then you're doing a whole extra roof and an extra foundation, but a three-wing versus a two-wing only has one extra party wall. 
at the end, so it's not a significant driver, but there is some cost associated with it. So can you go back to the, the slide that shows, I think it's the west, but then shows like the delineated space, the west building, but the delineated space for the east, where you can see like the whole plot? That um, I'm almost raising this more because I think I know where I land on it, but I, I want to raise it more just as a consideration to make sure this committee has at least discussed this. So we talked about the advantages of putting it on the east site from a traffic perspective and then also from a flexibility about what can go in between it perspective. But from a stewardship perspective for the town, either way we do this, we're leaving a significant plot of land open. And at the moment, whatever that plot of land is does not have a purpose. Right, it's not it's not an established purpose for the town. It's not a school property, and so are we limiting? Are we limiting the flexibility of the town to do something with the remaining land, which may or may not have anything to do with the school, if we choose one or the other? Could we think of another example of what that land might be used yeah. for from the town perspective if it wasn't used for a school? Like what else might the town want to put, build? I mean, I think because of <laughs> because being two schools, there's not a lot they could do with yeah. it, right? But maybe reason. they could do sports fields or something like yeah. that if the, you know Parks and Rec could get involved, do sports fields, something, something like that. I think the issue would be is the controls on that, right? So during the school day, yeah. We don't want um, community on school property during right. school times, right? So I think I think it would have to be very careful on how that was planned out if they were to do anything. But I couldn't see a building um, of any sort going there because you know, as we talk about traffic and bringing all that traffic inside there, what other group, even a town group, wants to kind of get in that melee? <laughs> 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 yeah. So I think it would have to be, you know, something, you know, weekend use parks, a tennis court, something like that, if they were going to do something with it, in any configuration that we put in. I would think, anyway. And that's, I mean, that's part of the reason I was talking about reserving that space for a preschool, right? The preschool is 100 kids? We're over 100, about 106, I think, now. Okay. So, you know, maybe in 10 years, maybe 150, 200, I don't know. But it, it, it isn't anywhere near the things. size of the other buildings, mm -hmm. right? So it'd be a smaller building that kind of is nestled, could be nestled. I'm not gonna say that's where we would do it, but could be nestled between the other two. And it would fit with the whole campus. Yeah, um, I think you were right before when you talked about it being wedged between the two schools. It really is a beautiful location because of its proximity to Marathon. What would be the acreage of that space? Yeah, ballpark. The entire site is slightly over 50, is about 54-ish okay. acres. It's, like 20, it's big. 20 acres. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we talked about like 22 or something when we were looking at it earlier. For this piece that we're yeah. utilizing? For what we'd be using. Mm -hmm. That's about right. It's a little bit less. That, that, that side is a little bit less than half, probably. I think for all the reasons that Mike brought up in looking at the, the east side, um, keeping the building away from the neighbors, getting it closer proximity to potential walk walkability to the, those neighbor neighborhoods, um, putting in that path, um, it gets you out of all the wetlands and gets that longer queue. You know, So I think all the points that Mike made really, I would agree with on looking at the east. Yeah, look, I, I think I agree. I mean, I think that we've heard a lot about the traffic problem, and I think that the ability to pull more traffic in is significant. I just felt like it was an important thing for us to at least raise because I want to make sure that we're, you know, again, we, there, we, we know from going through this process, there are not a lot of 20 plus acre pieces of buildable land in this town and so I think from a stewardship perspective, we just need to make sure that if we are making it more difficult to potentially use one, it, it's for a very good reason. I'm pretty confident that it is, but I think it's important to, to talk about. Yeah, be fine. And we don't have anything in the horizon that would be and not a good site for a fire station, of course. <laughs> 
<laughs> the response that would be that great. Would be, <laughs> yeah. um, I want to keep things interesting. <laughs> so, um, I'm, I'm obviously not trying to to wrap this up early, but I'm feeling like this discussion is heading towards uh, a preferred solution, um, and so it, what I'm hearing is that the general consensus is that we're looking at what would be actually a, one that's not actually on there right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be, it would, <laughs> it would be HR 7-E e is what we would name it yeah. now. Um, and if that is the general consensus, I would love, uh, what's, Could do I have wording on the motion? Does it matter? You want to recommend it as your preferred schematic option, the HR, whatever number you pick is recommended as the preferred schematic option. So, so we would, so we would be looking for a motion to choose as our preferred schematic option for submission to the MSBA, option HR seven East or E, which is e. Village East on Hayden Row, the three wing village. <coughs> Just have one question on Absolutely. the leaving option. Um, the the middle wing um, would daylight be an issue with with it being sandwiched between the other two wings, or I see it's north south orientation. The north the orientation is is good, and um, we would do daylighting models to to tweak that to make sure that it's not an issue. Okay. That's all I had. I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Are you ready for a motion, sir? I am ready for a motion. <laughs> I would move that the board vote to select HR 7E as the preferred option for the new school. I second it. Okay, we have a motion by Mike. We have a second by Sean Duhl. Um Any further discussion? I just want to make sure before we take this vote that everybody's got all their questions answered. Okay, then we are ready for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, then it is unanimous, seven to zero, that we have selected HR7E as the preferred site option for the new the replacement of Elmwood School. And then should we'll do it the second, right? Yes, should okay. do it the second. Yep. All right. <coughs> Major accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was a big one. It was. Um, yeah. What's that? Um, so, okay, so we've taken a vote on the preferred option. So, from our timeline perspective, the next two things that are going to happen are we are seeking, um, we'll seek endorsements of other, of this recommendation from other committees in town, specifically the school committee and the select board. Um, the school committee will be on uh, February 16th, so this Thursday, I believe, I looked at the agenda today, it's around like 8.15ish or something like that in, in that realm. Um, and so we'll need to present to the school committee um, a bit about how we got here and what the preferred option is, in addition to informing the school committee, although they're in attendance tonight, <laughs> um, and 40% of the school committee sits on this committee, so um, that, that's <laughs> um, it, it gives us, you know, as I always talk about, it gives us just yet another chance to talk about this in public, which mm -hmm. I think is, is really good. Okay. Um, and then on the 28th, we will be presenting to the select board, um, seeking their endorsement as well. Um, so in preparation for that, um, we had a bit of a discussion on, on in our working group on Friday, um, but certainly with um, our, our school committee representatives in attendance and our select board representative in attendance, I would love to talk just a little bit about how we should structure these discussions. Um, my thought was to give a, a presentation which basically introduces the, the obviously introduces the preferred um, schematic option that we've chosen, um, introduces the, the, the process we took, you know, short version of the process we took to get here, um, as well as our matrix and our cost estimates. Um, we'll have any other information, oh, and the 
picture of the. Oh yeah, can we get can we get a, we can get that one by yeah, Thursday. Just talking about yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn, shaking his head. Yeah. Got the impacts of yeah, the fact that we don't have one. Right? It's not. Yeah. 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 I got, got every team. option you can yeah. think yeah. of except the one you guys <laughs> picked for the team. Yeah. Um, so um, so obviously a picture of the uh, uh, of the. Um, Building so on the site. The building mm -hmm. on the site mm -hmm. will be great, um, and we will also, and, and so that I think should be kind of the bulk of the presentation, and then open it up to a Q and A. Um, we'll obviously have an appendix of everything else that we've gone over, but I think that's Leah. I would say I would really like the the image of the full two two site piece as mm. well because I think that was really good because then you focus in on each one but you get a, a kind of holistic picture of where they are comparatively. Yep, Agreed. that's a great point. Yep. So, <coughs> more work for Dan. I think she does them with that and we just zoom them in. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, so I think that's, that's what we ended up talking about yeah. on Friday, right? Yeah. Like I can zoom it back out and then I have yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Some member is going to ask what happens with the old government school. Now, the question is important for us because if it's to be demolished, is that on us? Or are we going to turn over the selectmen so in 10 years they can decide what they're going to do with it? What, how is that going to happen? Center school was easy because the MSBA didn't want us to have kids back in there. So it became, belongs to the Board of Selectmen. That's where it is now. The very same question is going to happen with Elmwood. And <clears throat> if the Board of Selectmen doesn't want to deal with the building, then I suspect the demolition of that building will fall, fall on the building committee, would it not? We're well, not, so, then, so can I, so just from a process perspective, I want to make sure, so if, when, when we open this building, Elmwood will cease to be an active school. Right. And if I remember from the marathon process, the first decision goes back to the school committee in terms of if they want to continue to operate it as a district building. And if they do not, then it goes back to the town and the select board for a decision around what they want to do, right? I'm only, yeah. I'm only concerned that they yeah. want to have that answer. Right. Right. Absolutely. No, I completely agree. Yeah. I just want to make sure we've got like the order of operations yeah. because technically speaking, yeah. it might never get to the select board if on Thursday the school committee says, this is great, we know what we want to use Elmwood it, for. The school got could that? decide. Psych. Psych. Yeah, I voted could, yes, but you know, on Thursday. School could right, right. Yeah. <laughs> for the early childhood education. It could, yeah. absolutely. That's why, I, that's why I wanted to get that out there because it's, yeah. So I guess then the question is, is any is demolition or anything else related to the Elmwood School part of this project or how does that work? Yeah, no, good, good question. question. Right? And, you yeah, know, Mike, question. thanks for bringing it up because I was going to bring it up also because that is a question that will be asked at both school committee and, uh, and the selectmen and by the MSBA that want to know what the potential reuse plans are and so I think to your point uh, Jonathan you laid out correctly the school would get the first you know right of refusal to, to look at that parcel and find what to do with it certainly there are needs within the school district as they grow that they may have a, a use for that particular site uh, and if they did not then it could be turned back over to the, to the town you know how you guys establish a committee in the case of center school it was a in a business district so that made sense that it was not and also had a very odd shaped parcel um, you know so the Elmwood site could be more usable if it was not currently occupied, um, but you deal with the gas line of that particular site. So if you freed up the entirety of the site, it has more flexibility than the center school site ever had. Um, so um, from that standpoint, there's more opportunities with, with Elmwood in the future uh, when it's not an occupied site. But it would go back to the school for deciding what to do first, and then beyond that, the, the town could establish a reuse committee like they did with the center school. And to be clear, we cannot use it as a school again. You could. Can you? I, I want to chase that answer down more. Mm -hmm. Most other towns, yes. Your town is under a unique growth standpoint. The, the, the case of Marathon is because you were closing center school to relocate it. If you were to add a school, you know, meaning you went from five schools to six schools, I don't think that would rule it out as a potential site for a school because you're you're adding a school, you're not taking away a school. That was what was happening with center school. Okay. So towns that shutter a school, like in case of Wellesley and a few others, that they're constricting, so they want to know what are you using that for if I'm paying to replace the school? Mm -hmm. What are you going to use the asset? Because they're reducing, they, the MSBA does not want to pay for in the future reestablishing growth if they paid for the <laughs> restriction. But you guys are on a growth with, um, 
uh, large growth. So it's a different, you guys have different specific variables. So for instance, if we wanted to shift preschool back to mm -hmm. Elmwood, mm -hmm. then we'd still be allowed to do that. Right, As Elmwood and the preschool would be a less intensive use of that site and could have more benefits than, uh, than a larger school would did at that site. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, yeah, we need to be prepared to give that kind of, uh, because that's where we are right yeah. now in terms yeah, of, exactly. but I think you're right. And I think right. that it'll be, as so many things are, a preview of questions that we'll get and from the town. The, the other thing is other communities use facilities like Elwood as the potential swing space. Say, for example, they were going to remodel or tear down town hall, but temporarily need a place to put town hall. That's what they use it for. In Brookline, they used the Lincoln School, which is a school that closed probably 30 years ago. They used it when they remodeled the town hall. They used it when they built, you know, two or three elementary schools. They put the kids in there while they were building the schools, i.e. swing space. The town could do the same thing. If they because Elmwood, unlike Center School, is relatively clean and, and uh, you know, only half the age. Right. Um, okay, anything else we should make sure we include in school committee or select board presentations other than what I... You want to restate all that just to make sure Dan and I wrote it down right? So I think so, I heard mm -hmm. um, the zoom out view, right, which is essential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, zoom out and zoom in view of the site option that so this <coughs> hasn't been drawn yet. With, uh, yeah. with the yeah. uh, E drawn on it. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. And then we would. Um, and the plan updated. If yeah, the, the close in, the, the yep. zoomed in close up of that. And, and then, then the matrix. And then and then you the want to send the whole slide deck or just the matrix? Right now, all I can see is a thumbnail. Do you want an appendix to this? I want an appendix that will have all of the all of the options in there. So essentially, but tonight's meeting packet is an appendix, and then yeah. and then the zoom in is the uh, is the recommended option with the matrix attached to it. My, th well, I think it's so. I think it's. Five, you want the summary five slides. Yeah, so yeah. the two, the two, the zoomed out, zoomed in, the matrix, the cost, and that, and the the one with the the All dates second. on it, and then everything else goes in the appendix. Nope. Does it matter that the one we chose isn't on the matrix? Are you gonna add that on there? Or it's on there. Oh, well, it's on there. Well, no, not well, the, well, the, add, the, yeah, the west add. has to be added, it, but the east is. Yeah, it's on. It will the be on, there. Made it on there. So seven yeah. was on there with the west, and west that replicated the three wing. Okay. And now we'll do east, and that will also two, re replicate the three oh, wing rating because it'll be the same. Yeah, I think you may not have the cost details for seven in the other page. Yeah, we're going to have to add that too. That'll, yeah, you'll get cost details in there as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna, yeah, from a cost standpoint, it's the same. So just, just to zoom back out on that. Get all the way to Thursday. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going on vacation for Christmas. Yeah, I have two. <laughs> Flights at seven. It may be dawn in Christmas. Oh. So, for simplicity, could you take off Elmwood entirely? That's on here just to, to make this an easier to. No, I, don't, I mean, I wouldn't. I, would I, 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 think, I, I, I think I'd rather leave. I mean, maybe you take out the grade, all, grade out ones because those went away yeah. for our purposes yeah. when the grade configuration discussion was. That's what I meant, but, uh, two, three. Oh, the, the grade, yeah, the grade out ones, yeah. yeah. But the two, three, yeah, that I agree. We could take we could take out those two, three ones. Okay, so we'll take that out and then we'll add the uh, HR7. I think, I think the numbers make and HR7 will be the same as the pinwheel for a year. So that's $174 million um, total yeah, green at this good. point. Green is bad. You know, which of the other Hayden Row ones that you know they're all plus or minus two million dollars. So that of the four happen to be grouped a little higher than the other two because, as we discussed, it's a it's about a million and a half premium to go deeper on the site, and when you compound the twenty eight percent, ends up about two million difference. So, yep. Um, and one other thing could be of interest is uh, through the feedback uh, with various stakeholders and the town um, residents. What are the kind of top three things you have heard? And what is our response to that? It would be good to communicate as well. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So if we could, and I, I could, I can sketch, if I can sketch this out. But yeah, sort of a, a what are the, what are we, what are potentially sort of the top three community questions that have been raised? Yeah. So yeah. traffic, 
cost. traffic, <laughs> traffic and, cost. <laughs> and cost. And yeah. cost. And, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I can I can sketch out kind of what that is and maybe some bullets for, for how that's going to go. Um, Mike? Is, it, is there some effort forthcoming to go back to the community groups and report what we all those people put in oh, like their the input, uh, particularly the ones that were in the library yeah. at the yeah, high school. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be great if we could make a presentation for them so that, you know, we've, we've got most of their stuff. You know, yeah. thank you for everything. Da, da, da. We can see the end result. Yeah. And hopefully there'll be advocates going forward. Yeah. Did they get invited Thursday, like individually invited, specifically as opposed to just, hey, there's a meeting, yeah. we reach out to that group and say, yeah, we want to come, do. we're yeah. put it all together this Thursday. You have the list of all of them, right? We do. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that would be a good idea, you individually invite them. So in terms of cost, I know the one to two million feels very small, but once again, we've got a lot of taxpayers with concerns, so I think the way that you were talking about it, explaining you know the extra asphalt, and then the fact that this actually allows us to get the traffic off Hayden Road. So mm -hmm. even though it's a higher cost, it's because we're widening, we're creating a longer road, and I think that explanation is probably good to hear from the school committee side as well as here because it it just makes a difference that the little even if it feels like a little bit of extra cost, that that cost is going to something that helps us mitigate an issue that the town cares about. Absolutely, yeah, it feels like they could be you know, money well spent in that regard, yeah. And Jeff, you said the one and a half escalates to two. What, what would that extra half a million, was that soft the cost? Soft cost. Yeah, soft yeah, cost. Would you have soft costs on pavement? I mean, essentially, utilities and pavement? Wouldn't soft cost more furniture and technology? And mm -hmm. that doesn't make that. Yeah, I mean, it's not, a, it's, not straight math at the end of the day. I mean, right at this zoomed out level, we're taking taking straight math. I mean, at the end of the day, there'll be, it's a longer schedule, so it'll be longer for us to manage that process. There'll okay. be some more carrying costs, you know, associated with it. Okay. Um, but yeah, it does not, does not translate to every element of the, uh, of the so soft It's a different cost. soft cost. So we'd carry the percentage of contingencies would be based on that, and, okay. and some extra effort on schedule would be based on that, but yes. There's not more ff &E or technology or other things, so there would be right. a, a fine-tuning of that. So <coughs> maybe a little less to, to her, I mean, watching the nickels. Yeah, I think with the two, yeah. you know, it's a great point, Bill, you're bringing up. I mean, essentially the $2 million, plus or minus, you know, we can dial it in, right? Yeah. The, the sense that, you know, they're all essentially equal. I know that's hard to say when you say $2 million mm -hmm. swing, but it's within the margin of error, you know, of, of less than a percent, right? And these are conceptual estimates based on yep. only what you've seen here, right? A, a narrative and the colorized floor plans that you've seen in the site plan, so. Thanks. Um, in terms of logistics for the presentation, so um, Tiffany and I are both planning on being there on Thursday so we can handle the, the, the presentation. Um, I don't, I'll have to double check if we'll post it or not as an ESBC, but everyone's sort of, so certainly welcome to attend, although we've had a lot of meetings lately, so feel free to watch on television. Um, or you know do anything else with your life um but uh yeah and then the select board uh, on the 28th will will I, we can yeah. work the same way yep. so any other questions on that and then on march 1st yep that we're meeting again mm -hmm. to vote to approve the final psr for submission well at that time we will review any feedback we've gotten from those meetings with the school committee and the uh, select board as well as any community feedback that we've had in the interim um, and then I think in addition to submitting the, the or voting to, to um, move forward with the PSR I think it would be a good time to t discuss what community outreach will continue to look like in as we get into March April etc as we're getting to the kind of the next phase of this project because now that we've selected a site I think the questions will uh, increase and probably change yeah. from where they were now. So I think we want to be really thoughtful about the conversations or how we're how we're having these conversations. And when do you anticipate a schedule looking out March, April, May? And do you anticipate sticking with? I know tonight's Monday, but typically Tuesdays. Okay. Yeah, we'd stick with your your normal night of Tuesdays, and Dan and I will work mm -hmm. on a schedule after we get through that March submission. So we can pick back up in mid March. We'll have plenty of topics to discuss in a similar, you know, twice a month rhythm as we roll out the topics. Um, 
So yeah, we'll, we'll have an updated schedule on that and we'll dial in, we'll talk about sustainability again, we'll talk about the mechanical systems, we'll talk about the benefits of uh, CM versus design to build. Um, we'll talk about reimbursement and the MSBA's process, all that stuff will be, you know, we'll drill in, drill down in over the next couple of months. Um, and then, yeah, and moving back to the Tuesdays, the, the one reality of the schedule of the town is that, as we've discussed, there is no, the reason we ha are having this on Monday instead of Tuesday is because we wanted to make sure that Shah Abdul could attend because there are often conflicts with the select board on Tuesdays. If we move to Mondays or Wednesdays, we start to conflict with appropriation. Thursdays, we start to conflict with school committee. Um, so it's you know so so um, I think we'll go back to Tuesdays and hopefully you're you're able to join us in the interim. But obviously we stay pretty plugged in, um, and um, yeah. So that's that's kind of why we we continue to land on that day. Makes sense. Yeah. And thanks for accommodating tonight. Okay. So for that meeting on March first. Dan and Chris uh, will put together the draft of the preferred schematic report, so you'll get an email copy of that mm -hmm. email link like you did last time with the PDP, where as they assemble the skeleton and we start to populate it, you'll see that kind of live link uh, get fattened up as we uh, take the culmination of all the presentations you had over the past three months and put it together in the next milestone report. Um, is there anything else for us to do tonight? No, I was just going to say, just so I heard you and Tiffany are going to take lead on Thursday. So Dan and I and Bob won't be there. We're not available. Uh, Chris is available if you okay. need somebody from the project team uh, to be present and answer questions. Um, I mean, we can discuss offline. I think, you know, I'm my, available. My general feeling is you probably don't need to burn another night out of the house. <laughs> but, um, I, but yeah, we can, we can discuss offline. So, and is it, so from uh, the, the putting those slides together, is like Wednesday, mid to late day doable? <laughs> say yes, because people, I don't know. Speaking for all of I mean, I, I, I'm just trying to think, so we have a little bit of time on Thursday to kind of make sure we're, we've got, we, we know what we're looking at, but. Um, I think based on that can, time assumption, you should assume I'm coming to the meeting. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so we can we can just yeah. stand. Yeah, I mean at the minimum we can get you is uh, we can definitely get the plan done. Yeah, um, I'm sure we can get something on the. It may not be as pretty on the site as they've been. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll be like a sketch version of it. Okay, but we can certainly get something over to you. Okay, great. We'll aim to get the same quality as the water okay. ones. Okay. Great. Then if there is nothing else, I would seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion by Bill. Second by Mike. All those in favor? So. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah, Never. Um, <laughs> and so we are adjourned <laughs> at, we'll yes. call it 7.30. It's, it's about half a day. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, HCAM. Have a good night.